Hi again, I'm Paul Ellis Jackson. I'm the Associate Minister at University Congregational Church in Wichita, Kansas, and I am celebrating 40 days of truth for my Lenten journey this year. Um, and uh, this corresponds to a course I'm taking about uh, truth, uh, especially truth in our current post-truth age. And uh, I'm taking that class in the Doctor of Ministry, Ministry program at Phillips Seminary in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying these little vignettes uh, as I'm processing through the material uh, of the syllabus of the class. But also, uh, not only am I sh you know, sharing some of that with you, but I want us to think about truth. Uh, I watched on the news yesterday um, a pastor from one of the big Methodist churches in town talking uh, about, uh, I guess it was Wednesday for Ash Wednesday, um, and uh, he was talking about, you know, uh, in just really beautiful language, um, the God of the cosmos, and, and but he was saying it in this grandfatherly, uh, comforting, confident tone. And, you know, right there, I'm picking apart his truth. But, you know, the way he presented it, and, and sometimes I think we don't do the, the deep work, you know, uh, of thinking through our truths. I'm not, I'm not condemning him in any way. He is a, obviously um, a beautiful man with, you know, beautiful, beautiful thoughts. But me, with my philosophical mind, you know, that cap on right now, I was really kind of digging into it, but I was fascinated by the performance that he gave and how much that lended credibility to the words he was saying um, because he, you know, had this cadence and this rhythm. And so, you know, today's vlog was supposed to be about justified true belief, which is this basis, uh, this traditional Western modernist um, way of coming at knowledge. Um, that was able to give people some some concrete foundations there this um, this process but you know I've kind of you know done a little sidebar here into this idea of of uh, the importance of the personality who is presenting the truth um, a big piece of the work of this course has to do with epistemic injustice uh, I can't I can't do ju I can't do justice to a definition of that term in this short time, but let's just say that there are ways of knowing and ways of being in the world that are unjust to some people uh, because they have misinformation or no information or wrong information or the words have been masked, uh, the truth has been masked. There's there's all kinds of things at play here. Um, I'm put in mind of Foucault, uh, Foucault uh, and his uh, his microcurrents of power. There's a lot a lot going on in, in, in this. So watching um, this gentleman, uh, uh, obviously uh, a loving theologian who cares deeply about um, his congregation and cares deeply about the Wichita community, but I was you know looking at it with this more critical mind and. Um, while I was appreciating uh, what he was saying, and I'm you know kind of picking apart and starting to go down those rabbit holes of, of his beliefs, trying to see how he got there, and oftentimes, oftentimes our minister friends are simply relying on the work that the church has done for them, and that's part of the, why we have the church. Um, you know, you, you don't have to do a lot of this work because it's done for you. But then I was really taken in by by how he performed um, his sermon and how his appearance and his grandfatherly tone and his confident manner. And hey, I was caught up and I was ready to shout amen and, and believe it all. So anyway, just a few thoughts on my rambling morning here as I work on another cup of coffee. And mm, oh, here's a justified true belief coffee is good. I believe that. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that next time. Have a great day.